Go for it. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another Muddy Mint video. Today, we're going to be talking about our 50-50 lie tank. So I guess it was quite a while ago. We made a video about our 50-50 lye tank and how we pre-mix our lye water in order to make our soap making a little bit easier. And we got a lot of questions. A lot of people were confused about how to use the lye tank or the solution in the lye tank. Um, so we just want to address some of those issues today and just talk it through. And sometimes it can get a little bit complicated. So. Troy here is going to be asking me questions. He's going to <laughs> pretend to be a new soap maker. I think one of the first questions is... Yeah. Oh, we're getting into it. Oh, are we getting... Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I'm done with do the Do we use 50-50 lye to make soap? Is that what we use? Is that where we stop? <laughs> right. This was a very common question. And the answer is no. So 50-50 lye basically means 50% lye and 50% water. That's what's sitting in our tank. It's actually a one-to-one -one ratio. So at Muddy Mint, we use a two-to-one ratio, which means we use two parts water and one part lye. So a lot of people were wondering if we use the lye water directly from the tank to make our soap, and, and we do, but we add extra liquid on top of that. So we end up with a two to one ratio rather than a one to one ratio. What's nice about the 50-50 lye solution and having it in a tank like this is that we can adjust the water amount that we add on top of what's already in there. So basically, just to back up a little bit, in soap making, you have to use at least one part lye to one part water. And the reason is that the lye needs something, um, a carrier basically, to help it dissolve and to help it integrate with the oils. So your lye amount is not gonna change. That's determined by, you know, when you use soap calc and it figures out how much lye you need based on the oils in your recipe and what your super fat or lye discount is gonna be. So that's kind of a set number, whereas the amount of water can vary depending on your recipe or your climate or all kinds of things. So the minimum amount of water you need is the same amount as the lye, so one to one. Mm -hmm. And that's because the lye needs to be properly dissolved. And then any water you add after that is just kind of extra. And the reason that we use extra is because we like to use other liquids like goat milk, coconut milk, um, aloe vera, coffee, what else? Carrot juice. Carrot juice. Yeah. So we like to use alternative liquids in our soap and that's one of the main reasons that we use the lye tank because we've already got our water and our lye mixed together so the lye has a carrier and is ready to go and then we can add whatever extra liquid we want in whatever amount we want too, you know? I think we actually only have one soap that we use water yeah. entirely for. Right, we don't tend to use water. Um, for that last third. For that last third, yeah. Actually, let me show you guys this. Is this a good time to do this? This is a perfect okay. time. Okay, <laughs> so this is the lye and the water from our tank. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio right here. So this is what's coming out of the lye tank. And then what we do at Muddy Mint is we add an equal amount of extra liquid. So let's say this is carrot juice, just e for sake of example. Equal amount to what? Equal amount to our water. So let's say we have five ounces of lye in our recipe we have five ounces of water. That's coming out of the tank. So that's 10 ounces we're pulling from the tank. And then we're adding carrot juice on top of that. That carrot juice is being added to our oils. We don't add it directly to the solution. We add it to our oils. So that's also going to be five ounces. So we've got two parts water or liquid to one part lye. So hopefully that makes sense. I think it does make sense. Yeah, all right. That's, it's, it's also 
worth noting that this is what Muddy Mint does. This is what we do. Yeah. We and we don't really deviate from the two to one ratio. We use that for all of our soaps. We across pretty the much board. use it for all of them. Yeah. So is now a good time to go into why you might manipulate that ratio a little bit based on the essential oils you're using or yeah those kind of factors. Yeah, sounds I'm, great. I'm leading you to. <laughs> <laughs> so there is no standard amount of water to use in soap making. Um, you'll see different books and recipes will have different water amounts and you can manipulate that based on what you're trying to do. So in our case, one of the main things that we do is that we add an alternative liquid. So we want to make sure that we've got enough in there to actually, um, you know, have benefits in the soap or add color or whatever it is that we're trying to do. So we always use two to one because we feel like that's plenty of liquid to add the benefits from the liquid that we're adding, like goat milk, for instance, can make your bar a little more creamy. Um, carrot juice is going to add a really nice orange color. Um, but you don't have to use this much. And you can also use water here instead of an alternative liquid. Now, in some cases, depending on your climate, like I was just talking to somebody recently who lives in India, and she has a very humid climate, and she says she can't use a two to one water ratio. And the reason is that it's just too humid there. She has to use less. So she uses 1.8 to one, which means she's got 1.8 parts water to one part lye. Um, some people go down as far as 1.3 to 1 or 1.2 to 1. Um, and the reasons that you would want to do that is to be able to unmold a little bit quicker. Um, or if your environment is very humid and you're finding that you're having a hard time, you know, with your soap solidifying, then you could try reducing your water. Um, also glycerin rivers are something that's pretty common in soap making and one of the ways to avoid that is by reducing your water amount. And then another thing is soda ash. If you're finding you have a lot of soda ash on your soap, you can try reducing your water amount in order to minimize soda ash. And I've heard a lot of soap makers actually say that they get zero soda ash um, with lower water amounts. So those are the reasons to decrease your water. But there are reasons to increase your water too. I already, I think I know why. You know, what, <laughs> what, what do you think? Troy? Even though we don't do it, yeah, um, we haven't played with it. But I think if you have an accelerating essential oil, yeah. like clove, for example, yeah, it would benefit you to use something a little bit above a two to one. Yes, with clove, everything accelerates. I mean, if you make soap with clove and you're adding the clove in there, which we all, you always want to add it at the end, even if you've got you know, plenty of water in there, you'll notice that your batter gets thick very, very quickly and you have to get it in the mold. And if that's happening to you all the time and you're having trouble even getting it in the mold or texturing your tops or whatever, then some good advice is to add more water because that's gonna give your batter a little bit more time um, adding more water when you're using clove or thyme or any of those accelerating essential oils or fragrances is going to make a huge difference, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's look at your Should recipe, Troy. This? What, what are you All wanting right. to make? This was a recipe that Simi pulled off the Brambleberry website. It's pretty straightforward. It happens to be called Jasmine Moon Soap Project. We're not going to go into the whole recipe, but we just want to call out the lye and the distilled water is what we're going to go through. Okay, I'm going to write the amounts up here. Yeah. So in this, on this recipe, it happens to be six ounces exactly of sodium hydroxide lye. And the distilled water is 13.4 ounces. So Simi's going to do a nice little graphic. All right. So we can see what that looks like. So this was our biggest question for the video. I mean, this is one of the reasons we're doing this video is because everyone was like, okay, I love the idea of making a 50-50 lye solution, but how do I use it in my recipe? Like, what do I do? So there's a little bit of math involved, but it's pretty straightforward, and we're going to go through it, and hopefully it all makes sense. Okay. So this Jasmine Moon Soap Projects uh, requires 6 ounces of lye and 13.4 ounces of water. Now, in our lye tank, we know that when we pull 
that solution out of the tank, it's always going to be half lye and half water. So what we want to do is we want to get six ounces of lye. So I'm going to write this down. Actually, I'm going to do it in red. So six ounces. So there's going to be six ounces of lye, which means there has to be six ounces of water as well. So if you add those two up, 6 plus 6 is 12. So that means we want to take 12 ounces out of the lye tank. All right, if you measure out 12 ounces of your 50-50 lye solution, it means you're going to have 6 ounces of lye in there, and you're going to have 6 ounces of water. And that's something you can just trust, because you know that you mixed it 50-50, right? If you go watch our video, you'll see that we weighed out very carefully all the lye and all the water, and it came out to exactly, both were the same amount. Or even yeah. e equal amounts. 50 pounds of lye, 50 pounds of water. I don't remember exactly what we well, did, we but go it was by, something like that. We go by the bag, bags of ice. Yeah, so. right. Um, so some people did ask, do you need to stir your lye tank? And I think that's probably a good idea just to make sure everything's incorporated before you pull everything out of it. But essentially, you're going to take out 12 ounces from your tank. So now you've got your 6 ounces of lye. We'll check that off. And you've got 6 ounces of water. OK. But you're trying to get to 13.4 ounces of water. So that means you have to take your 13.4 and subtract the 6 that you've already got and you end up with 7.4 ounces. So that means you need to take 7.4 ounces extra water, um, distilled water, and add it to your oils. Now, let me just write that down. So 7.4 ounces of water. So you've got 12 ounces from the tank, an extra 7.4 ounces of water. And the way that we add our additional um, liquid, like water in this case, is directly to our oils. So that's another question people asked. Um, you can add the water to the, the lye water that you pulled out, right? Is this mm -hmm. all making sense? Yeah. You following? Yeah. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Hope you guys are following, too. So you've got your 12 ounces in your container. You could add your water directly to that. And if you're using water, sometimes that's a good idea because what happens when you add your additional water in there is it's going to warm up your lye water. So if you need your lye water to be a little bit warmer when you use it, that's kind of a nice way to warm it up. Because what happens is that the lye starts reacting with the water that you've added in there. However, if you're using something like um, milk, coconut, any kind of milk, or carrot juice, or something that might scorch, we do not add to our lye water. Um, what we do is we add it directly to our oils. And that way, when we add our lye water into our oils and everything that we have in there, it's um, going to be doing the reaction with all the oils and everything, so your milk does not scorch, as long as you soap cool. You probably want to soap cool if you're using milk like 100 degrees or less. Right. OK. We al and we always soap a little bit warmer than room temperature, too. Yeah. Between yeah. We usually do 85 to 90, 95. 90-ish. 90 95, yeah. 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 Seems to work best for us. Yeah, and the tank that we have does have a little heating element on it, so we do turn it on for a little bit before we make our soap, and we get it up to about 90 degrees. That way, when we draw our lye water from the tank, it's warm and about the same temperature as our oils. So it's probably also worth noting that beca just because this recipe called out 13.4 uh, ounces of water, because you have the one-to-one -one lye ratio or 50-50 lye ratio already, or lye solution already prepped, 
you could add, you could play around with that last 7.4 ounces and use any liquid you wanted, right? Yeah, you can use any liquid you want, which is really, could, I mean, we didn't even talk about the benefits of using the lie tank. We should do that. Which we should talk about. But, I mean, obviously the big benefit that we've talked about is, is being able to use an alternative liquid. Without um, any making ice cubes or we can use milks without having to worry about um, making ice making ice cubes out of those milk yeah a lot of soap makers use ice cubes um, milk ice cubes in order to make their milk soaps and the reason that you do that is when you add your lye you know you can't just have liquid milk and add lye to that because your milk is going to heat up a lot and scorch and there's also fats in the milk so it starts to react and so you want to keep everything really cool and one way to do that is make milk ice cubes um, and if you've ever done that, you know it takes a really long time because you have to mix your lye super duper slowly. Try to make sure you know that you keep it in a cold water bath and keep it cool. Um, you know, I'm pretty lazy, so I got tired of that technique pretty quickly. And those those so, those soap makers are are using that milk, whether it's goat milk or probably goat milk. Um, they're they're only using that for their liquid. Yes, so they actually have more goat milk right. in their soap. Than, um, than we do. Yeah, and it's, it's being used as a carrier for the lye and, you know, on top of that for its beneficial properties. I kind of feel like the carrier for the lye should be water because, because it gets so hot and it reacts pretty quickly. And then you've, you know, you've kind of got that part done and then you can do whatever you want with your additional liquids. I have another question that occurred to me. Yeah. Shoot. I'm super interested in pre-prepping because it's very convenient. Yeah. Pre-prepping my lye solution. Is there a way to do it without a 20 gallon tank like we have? Yes. Good question. We even have props available to answer this question just by coincidence. <laughs> but before I answer, let's talk about the other benefit yeah, of the lye tank. Advantages. Yeah. Is that you don't need to prep your lye every single time you make soap. I mean, for me, this was a huge game changer because every time I would go out to the studio to make soap, I would dread making the lye. So prepping everything in advance means the lye is always ready to go. I mean, we walk in the door, we, we make our oil buckets, and our lye is, I mean, we just heat it up for a little bit and then it's ready to pour and we don't even have to think about it. So um, I think that's a huge benefit. So the benefits are being able to use alternative liquids, having your lye prepped already and ready to go. You can, you know, get your batches out a lot quicker. Uh, what else? I think those are the main two. Those are the two main advantages. It's, cool. it's like you, you mentioned it already, I think, but it's cooled. Yeah. We make, your we make lye's our, cool and ready, yeah. We make our lye solution with bags of ice these days. Um, which keeps the solution a lot cooler, right? Yes, that about was another a, question we 120 got. 120 degrees, I think, is about the, the max it gets when you're using bags of ice. If you're using distilled water, we measured at one time, water at room temperature, it can get to 235. So yeah. you spend a lot of time in that case um, waiting for it to cool down so, you, so it's usable. Right. You almost have to wait till the next day, really, or, or much later in the day. Yeah. Yeah, and that was the other question we got a lot is like you're, like you're not using distilled water to make your lye water, and the answer is no, we're not. And I was worried about it at first, too, because you hear that all the time about using distilled water. But I think that the ice is actually purified, uses purified water. Ice is food grade. It has to be food grade in order to sell. So we haven't had any issues with using ice, um, and we just we buy it at the store. I mean, you could make your own distilled water ice cubes if you're kind of small batch. Um, but yeah, using the ice has been completely fine for us. And one of the issues that happens with tap water is like the minerals in the water can cause the lye to react with it. So I think that the ice maybe just has fewer minerals than what's just coming out of your tap. The other advantage of using ice um, that's tied to temperature, the temperature of the solution is that 
um, when you when you keep it cooler, it creates less fume. Yes. Fumes. No fumes. I mean, almost less, none. Almost none. Right. And if you're but working in an indoor space, that's really nice. Yeah. Um, if you use distilled water at room temperature, it's going to fume quite a bit. Yeah. So you need to make sure you have a respirator on or, or right. a mask. Yeah. At least a mask. Yes. <laughs> Minimum. <laughs> Okay, back to this baby. Yeah. So, um, before we moved into this space, we were working out of the studio in my backyard, and we didn't have a lot of room for equipment. Um, and we were making a lot less soap back then. And so we were using these to store our lime water. These you can get off Amazon. I will link to them. Um, we have six of them, I think. So we kind of got to the point where we were mixing six of these at a time, and then we start needing more lye water, which is when we got the tank. But this will work great for anybody who's starting out. Um, what's nice about these containers is that they have a lid where you can, that has a little spout, so you can pour out of these really easily. And what I was doing is I was putting 85 ounces of distilled water in here, and you could use ice instead. Mm -hmm. At the time, I didn't really know that you could use ice, but um, ice would work great in here too. And then, so 85 ounces of distilled water and 85 ounces of lye. So we put the water in here, we have another container with 85 ounces of lye, measure it out, and then you just slowly add it in here. And these regular size spatulas, I mean, they fit in here and you can stir, but if you're using water rather than ice, this is gonna, your hand can get extremely hot. <laughs> So we, ha we got this, I got this fancy spoon, which is also silicone, which is a lot longer. So it's much easier to mix with this guy. So you slowly add your lye in, keep mixing, keep mixing until you have it all incorporated. And then put the lid on right away because you don't want any water evaporation to happen because if there's too much water evaporation, you're actually ending up with a solution that's like a little bit lie heavy and right. then you had said which is another reason to mix it with ice and keep the temperature cooler right you're gonna get if, if you get if you're doing this with distilled water and lye it's gonna get to 235 degrees or thereabouts and you could you're gonna probably have a lot more evaporation or potential for a lot more evaporation than if you're using ice yeah, in fact, I remember making lye water in these and sometimes having the water like kind of start boiling, which was kind of crazy, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so ice maybe is a better idea, but um, once you have your lid on, you want to leave the top open to like let out a little bit of heat, especially if you're using water rather than ice. And then you can close it up and basically, you can keep these for, I don't know, I. I don't think there's like a standard amount of time, but I feel like I was keeping these up to a month or maybe even two months before using them. You just wanna make sure that you stir before you use it. And if you're noticing anything weird with the lye water, definitely don't um, use it. But if it looks clear and normal, then yeah, it should last quite a while. I think we covered everything. I think so, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of the small batch lye water making. Once you get to bigger batches, you can switch over to a tank. Um, but just to recap, the benefits are using alternative liquids, having your lye ready to go, having your lye at temperature it just makes everything run way more smoothly in the soap studio. Um, and makes the days more fun. You don't have to make lye every day. Right. <laughs> I think it's a key, you know, switching to a lye tank feels to me like it was a key moment in our scaling up of the business yeah and um, maybe there maybe we'll do a video at some point in the future about um, ways to scale up yeah that can be down the line yeah for sure <laughs> all right thanks for hanging in with us I know that was a lot um, hopefully it all made sense hopefully you guys understand how to use uh, 50 50 lye water in your own recipes and yeah. yeah we'll see you next time leave us questions in the comments yeah definitely or ideas for future videos yes <laughs> all right 
Thanks, Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>